Good morning, everyone. I'm Hiroshi Nishida from Hokkaido University. Um, I'm very pleased to have uh, this opportunity here because uh, I have uh, looked for this type of opportunity to release our study. Um, ongoing outbreak has uh, caused uh, uh, ourselves to work on uh, the uh, epidemiological studies of the novel coronavirus uh, as early as possible, and it's still competition phase. And uh, the, a bunch of studies have been conducted uh, across the world, and uh, the, uh, still the, um, so many papers are uh, currently under review state, uh, uh, submitted from a variety of research institutes. And uh, the, to improve the, our outbreak response to the, the control, uh, it has been that uh, uh, the desire of the, the researchers like us to openly share uh, the unpublished data sets and also the unpublished results uh, with the public as early as possible uh, and possibly in a timely manner. And the preprint servers that exist uh, after the world, like a med archive or bio archive, allow us to upload those results. And that uh, using those preprint servers and uh, uh, with this timing to post everything onto the server, uh, we have decided to, to disclose everything that we have uh, uh, from our department. And uh, uh, today I'd like to summarize that uh, to what extent uh, the, we have understood about the uh, basic epidemiological features of the novel coronavirus infection. Uh, therefore, the, the, please have a look at the, the top slide. And, uh, I put a disclaimer. So the content in my presentation include the new results from our group, which I have never uh, disclosed to anyone by today's press companies. Uh, uh, but they can be quoted, broadcasted from today because uh, we have uh, in principle posted uh, everything onto the preprint server. And actually, the, the initial clusters of cases, uh, many of uh, the writers may remember that uh, the initial cases in Wuhan shared the history of exposure at the seafood market in Wuhan. Uh, but uh, we explored uh, that data set in detail. The epidemic curve shown on the left-hand side is uh, uh, what it was published in Lancet from the researchers uh, working at the infectious disease hospital in Wuhan. The red bars indicate the counts of people who share the exposure at the seafood market. The blue light bars show the counts of cases who did not have any exposure at the seafood market. Initially, the, there was a news that uh, everyone shared that exposure history and therefore wondered what kind of animals are sold at the market. Yeah? But uh, uh, what we have to note here is that uh, the index case that was identified in Wuhan on this figure uh, is blue, the, who did not have an exposure. And uh, uh, for, uh, suspected a secondary case uh, who developed the illness on 10th of January uh, there were two persons who did not have any exposure in seafood market, and only one uh, had the seafood market exposure. Um, and based on that, uh, we have calculated the, the number of uh, potential secondary transmissions that was generated from a single primary case, and uh, the, assuming that the serial interval uh, or the, the time from illness onset in a primary case to the time of illness onset in a secondary case is a matter of uh, one week, uh, the right-hand side uh, panel shows the reproduction number uh, that was estimated uh, to, uh, for, for each generation of cases. And it looks that uh, the R0, uh, or the generation dependent on reproduction number, the, the average number of secondary cases generated by a single primary case was uh, consistent with uh, what is quoted as a published estimate in the present day from 1.5 to 3.5. And uh, uh, taking the time interval of those cases, it looks, uh, in our impression, that uh, it looks like a single exposure curve, but uh, actually the time interval from index case to the potential secondary case and the secondary case to the tertiary case, uh, serial interval is calculated to be 7.4 days, which is consistent with SARS. And moreover, uh, considering that uh, the secondary case included uh, one person who visited the seafood market. The ongoing epidemic curve with a substantial number of cases with a seafood market exposure uh, in the middle of that epidemic curve uh, 
uh, can represent those who acquire the transmission uh, from human to human route uh, at the seafood market. Therefore, the epidemic curve uh, that was published in Lancet uh, indicating the, that the common features as uh, exposure at the seafood market uh, can be actually the consistent with uh, uh, substantial human to human transmission uh, since the beginning. And uh, nothing was uh, suggestive of uh, zoonotic origin strongly. And uh, in fact, uh, the virus has not been identified from uh, any wild animals that are sold at the market by now. And uh, uh, therefore, we suspect that uh, the virus has had uh, substantial human to human transmission since the beginning of the December epidemic. Thank you, Doctor. My name is Nakano Freelance. A uh, few questions. As of 9 o'clock this morning today, according to People's Daily in China, more than 20,000 people have been infected in mainland China alone. So how many, how many more people do you estimate will get infected for the next few months? And some health experts in Britain warn that the number could jump to 100,000. Plus, uh, if you include uh, so-called asymptomatic cases, how many people might have risk of infection? Um, the total number of uh, infections that uh, have already taken place may have already exceeded uh, 100,000, actually. And uh, the, um, for instance, uh, what I estimated from Japanese passenger data is that by now, uh, by 29th of January, the, at least 20,000 infections must have occurred and uh, more than five days, so it's, it's about uh, one week uh, since 29th of January. The has passed and the, the exponential growth with the, the similar rate has continued and therefore it, it must have been over 100,000 infections by now. And uh, uh, accounting for asymptomatic infections, the half of that number may have experienced the, the uh, symptomatic illness. But uh, that's, that includes a uh, uh, bunch of mild cases uh, having only fever or fever and cough. Uh, and that, uh, uh, roughly speaking, we have to assume that only 10% of those infected individuals uh, may encounter uh, the uh, substantial illness that requires uh, medical attention. Uh, I came from web media called IWJ, Independent Web Journal. So my question is, it's kind of a little bit sci-fi theory, but this virus like made by human, there's possibility. And also like researchers thinking like there is like the, the possibility made by human. Yeah, thank you. Um, there is uh, uh, no strong indication that uh, the ongoing virus is uh, artificially made. And that, uh, at least what I can tell you in relation to that question is that uh, uh, a phylogenetic tree has been already drawn uh, according to the sequence of the, the virus. And uh, uh, it's close to SARS uh, associated with coronavirus. And uh, uh, the, according to the sequence, uh, the animal origin is likely to be the, the bats. And that, uh, if uh, the artificial process uh, uh, was uh, in the process of uh, that, that emergence, uh, it's unlikely, but uh, in, in any case, there is no indication about that. Yeah. I have gotten so many tips about how, about which particular lab somewhere in China or where in the world the virus was made. I, I, the, 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 the WHO has um, on its Facebook page or somewhere, it has an entire page devoted to myth busting. So I think this happens every time there's a new pathogen on the loose. The rumor mill springs into overdrive and puts out a lot of misinformation.